Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Masters of Self University podcast. I'm your host, Ellie Lee. And I'm your host, Danny Molly. And today we are joined by mystical life coach, Rachel Baker, everybody. Hey, Hello, Rachel. everyone. Hi, hi. Hi. Hey. Um, well, Danny, do you want to just share that you just finished crying in the living room floor? I turn around. I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? And you're, just, and you're you look up. No, and, that's not what you said. You what? started with. What's, what's wrong? wrong? That's what, that's what I said. I said, what's wrong? And then I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, not what's wrong. What's going on? And you were like, I'm just falling in love with my dog. And it was really beautiful. Aww. Yeah. He's really share? opening me up. He's yeah. really opening me up in very, very beautiful levels. And I know actually, I mean, I can see a crate right behind you, uh, Rachel. I know I got him, our puppy. So darn cute. I love him. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that soul's there to, you know, open you up a little bit as well. He is the I'm blown away. Okay, so we've been talking about a puppy for months now. And the conversation has been in and around we're bringing an infant into the house. And you have to remember what it was like bringing Mateo and Ayla home and they were infants and that's exactly what this is going to be like so who's going to buckle down I said you know I I'm going to buckle down and I'm going to be committed to this but it's taken a lot of months for us to get to this place right Mm -hmm. so we go on Saturday morning to go look at this litter and these puppies are just like Bah, going crazy, jumping on people and you know, going crazy. And I look over and Matt and I look over and there's this puppy. And we're like, there he is. That's him. Aww. And his name at the time was Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> and he's quarter Burmese, mountain dog, quarter poodle and half lab. Wow. Super crazy. So I'm ready, dude. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I got my backpack on ready to deal with puppy isms for months to come. And we bring this dog home and we're still waiting for the puppy. We have this dog who's like, Hey Dutch, come here. And he's like, Hey Dutch, sit down. Hey Dutch, let's go to the bathroom outside. Wait a minute. (laughs) Where's the big problematic puppy? <laughs> Where's the big problematic puppy? And I think I got myself so worked up about like how crazy this was going to be that the universe has just been like, all right, here you go. Here's something different. <laughs> Here's a gift. Here's a blessing. But he's unconditional love. He's like a healer dog. He's 100% a healer. He comes up to people and he brings this level of harmony and comfort and joy for people like this he lets the kids just uh, all over him he's just so sweet but you're right danny he brought in this essence of just pure yeah love and pure joy and mm, just so special yeah animals are very very special i've always had a very deep affinity to dogs especially Mm. um I think they're incredible beings and yeah, owning one or I don't like that term owning, but being a parent to one, right? Being a, uh, a guide to an animal in this life, a dog, it's really opening me up. And the more that I have to step up and become responsible. And I know that what, you know, as I was, I could feel my heart opening as I just sat there with him as he chewed his toy um and like you know the way he takes the toy and puts it on my leg and then puts his paw on my leg while he chews it as if to say i want to have this moment and bond with you while i'm really excited to do this thing dad 
right? Mm. And um, it's just this moment of gratitude for this work because there is mm. no way I would have stayed with an animal that is as crazy as he's been um as triggering as he's been because everything that he brought up in terms of his power his size and my there he is barking now is. my powerlessness um and everything that's brought up in me and by me being able to heal that it's allowing me the freedom to actually open up to the gift that he's bringing and uh, oh, the the beautiful thing is you know about the universe and animals everyone's going to get what they kind of need right it's not that everyone should have the particular lessons that i'm getting from him right now but wow they were so perfect and beautiful and as difficult as they've been to work through and integrate thank god i've had this work to not take it all personally and to actually grow and evolve from because i mean five years ago if you would have placed this um this animal i would be like no way First, I would have ran all programs of separation because he was a pit bull and been like, oh, and been mm. all judgment and superior. And then second, if I was actually stepping into any role of responsibility and, fa- and saw how much work this was going to take, I'd have been like, nah, I'm good. We'll just, we'll just foster him and let him go to another household. Mm. And, you know, through this work, you really learn, no, let me own what I'm feeling because that's got, yes, it's been triggered by him, but these feelings are my feelings and I can walk away from these right now and blame him or I can take responsibility and own them. And by doing that, it's allowing me to step up. And in that stepping up, it's allowing me to open to new connection. Like this connection that we have is so amazing. And I never would have had that if I didn't know how to find my programs, alchemize the pain um, and heal. Yeah. And what it offers you as well for a lot of dog owners out there and kitty cat owners is owners, (laughs) family members. Thank you, Danny. (laughs) Is this connection with oneness that doesn't have the strings attached or human 3D model involved? Because, you know, Dutch needed to go to the bathroom this morning five minutes before he told me he had to go to the bathroom, I knew that he had to go to the bathroom. Mm. So I was already getting up, getting ready to get him out of the crate, take him to the bathroom. And there's that level of communication because there's no other blocks or holdups. The, the line of communication, the quantum field between the two of us completely open and he needs me to feel when he needs to go to the bathroom. That's part of potty training. Mm. And we have to be deeply connected with them in that way to understand that I got to go to the bathroom or I need exercise or it's time for me to eat or what have you. Because that's really important at these first stages of having a puppy, you know? Yeah. You're so right. This is a beautiful segue into what um, Ellie wanted to kind of go into today. Uh, but before we get there in terms of like um, – you know, psychic gifts and connection. Like what is it like um, opening that channel between you and, and Dutch that your puppy? It's really lovely. There's not, um, there's not distortion. Mm -hmm. So when you're reading someone's energy or you're reading the frequencies that a lot, a lot of times there's distortion and you can't read it clearly or there's like a friction or a sandpapery type of feeling so whether it's you not wanting to speak your truth because of some other reason that has something to do with you or has something to do with them you know there is not that distorted feeling or that contorted feeling it's just a clear channel between the two and it happens a lot when you have let's say you have a paying client versus a friend or an acquaintance, or somebody that you're just trying to drop an advice bomb on. When you have a paying client, there's consent. And when it's a buddy, you're like, oh, man, there's distortion there. You know, it's not a clear channel because you're going to bump up against not only their programs, but some of yours. (laughs) So it's clear like that. Mm. 
Oh, then that, that makes sense. You get very clear messages. There aren't any questions. There's not the distortion. There's not the frictiony sandpaper feeling. And in what form do you get um, these messages? There's knowing. It's just a knowing. You're just like, oh, got to take the dog out. He's got to pee. Got to call my friend so-and-so because they're having a really hard time right now. Um, what does it feel like? Somebody's really angry. Somebody's angry in that house right now, and this person needs support. So you you have it hit you in this, yeah, it's like in a knowing center. Like, mm-hmm. like you know 2 plus 2 equals 4, you know it. Now your programs come in and start chat, chitter-chatting. Mm-hmm. And when you are brave enough to drop the chitter-chatter, the mind trying to play that little endless monopoly game with you when you're brave enough to do that and just really follow through, even though it's GD scary, you realize that, Oh, how rad is this? Like I followed this and it was dead spot on and I didn't really understand why I needed to go into this grocery store, but here we are. And this is why. And I trusted that. (laughs) Does that make sense? Yeah. I feel like with my dog, Nala, I, for a long time, was getting all these hits that, like, she had to be with me, she had to be with me, but I couldn't trust my intuition, and I didn't really even know if that's what was going on, and so I just kept, like, doing all of these things that, you know, weren't, wasn't allowing what was to be, which was that she was meant to be with me, um, play out, and now I'm, like, understanding more and more. I took a psychic animal class to really learn, mm-hmm. and I realized, like, this is the, this is the thing with like psychic gifts and all of these things. It's not what I think it is. So it's, I always think it's gotta be this, it's going to come in and it's a download and I'm going to feel like this. I'm going to feel like that. And it's like, it's it's exactly what you said. It's, It's just this knowing, but because there are so many programs that are like get interfered in the way it is difficult for me to really know and understand like, okay, that's an intuitive hit versus oh I don't really if know that that's what it was and then start doubting myself and that's why even my relationship with Nala is like sometimes I'll, I'll think I know she's communicating with me and then programs will get in the way and then I'm like oh I have no idea actually and that's like very a reflection too of like my current journey of feeling frustrated about the fact that I you know there's not a lot that I feel like it's coming in and it's like no you're just missing it all because you think it's something else and so yeah it's been really interesting mm-hmm. in that sense. Well, in shamanism, they talk about clearing the bone um, in in different types of modalities that I've listened to before and whatever. It's about clearing the vessel. Mm -hmm. And part of that is clearing out the mental programming that you have in and around it in general. Mm -hmm. Um, People with intuitive gifts are special. Yeah. Nope, they're not. Um. People with these gifts have all these labels and all of these qualities, (laughs) you know, it's just what we've done to each other. It's society and how we look at certain things. And then the mental program started to run because of these subconscious belief systems around it. That's Mm -hmm. how we used to find water. This isn't rocket science. It's just something that people don't trust anymore. Yeah, it's like massively forgotten and we're so disconnected from all these parts of ourselves and our, just ourselves in general. Like we're just disconnected. And the more that we heal and as you say, like clear the vessel, that was like whenever I'd talk to Rachel Fiore about this, it's always, yeah, you just, just keep healing and whatever's there will be there. I'd be like, but I want a psychic gift. I want to be cool. You have it. Things. All of you have it. So if you're listening right now, you all have. Mm-hmm. And I know this is like some cliched empowerment statement. It's true. <laughs> it is totally true. You, you are, and that's it. You are. Mm-hmm. It's that you came out of the womb and you got flicked and you got flicked again, and you got flicked again, and you have to fix all the places you got flicked, and you have to go back and and feel that and experience that and and heal all the places that those frequencies 
uh, came in and you didn't really know what to do with them and you got flicked. Mm. And when you heal all those little places, you got flicked. You'll, you can come back. I'm not fully back. I run all kinds of mental programs, but you can come back and experience what it's like to be the I am again. Yeah. I wonder, and I'd love to, for you to answer this Baker, because obviously you and I grew up very religious, but I wonder if, because I, you know, was in the church from like an infant, I wonder, I mean, I think I know is that the programming was like, all of that stuff is like, that's devil. So Mm -hmm. I shut it down Mm -hmm. real quick because it was just ingrained into me. It's like anything that has to do with, that doesn't have to do with Jesus or the Bible or this church is the devil. And so shut it down. So I think, like you said, we're all connected, but yeah, I think I just like closed all those doors really quick because I knew that it wasn't right or it wasn't good or it wasn't of heaven or of Jesus or of God. Um, which I think most of us do that, especially if we're raised in the church and with like a very, you know, hardcore religion. Yeah. For me personally, I don't know about anybody else, but for me personally, the very first psychedelic experience that I had instantly reminded me of where I actually came from and what all of this actually is. Mm. Wow. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. This makes a lot more sense to me and I can totally line up with this. Wow. So all that doctrine shit, all that religious stuff that, I was like, man, I was kind of always questioning it anyways. I think I've told you guys this before. I think it was six. And I was like, what? what? Huh? Mm-hmm. So all that stuff was in there. But then that first real drop-in psychedelic experience, I was relieved. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, yes, we're one. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. We're light beings. And we're having this crazy experience here. Now, I didn't know the extent of it to what Rachel talks about. And I'm learning so much from her. And it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Puts a lot of words to the experiences that I was having so many years with ayahuasca. So that's brilliant. And I'm so appreciative of being able to have a language to place in there. Mm -hmm. But to feel oneness. And to be like, oh, wait. (laughs) We're all one, and this is what that actually feels like. Mm -hmm. So I think that helped me feel what it felt like to have access to wisdom that was right here within me and be able to trust me and love me and be there for me. Not that I was anywhere near that during those moments. I didn't know what the heck I was getting myself into. But just to feel it for just that moment and give you an essence of like, huh, okay now i like that and and this is something ellie and i have spoke of before is i'm sure i'm sure there's a part of you listening to that ellie that's like oh well, what, well why didn't i have that experience when i did psychedelic is that is that correct you feel, kind of feel that a little bit yeah i mean i did a three day with shamans peyote and i didn't experience anything And that's a part of the frustration and anger that's Mm -hmm. coming up right now with all of this. Like, you know, I've been spending time, I've been waking up 5am just to spend an hour like with myself in my light. And this morning I like got up and I went into my room and I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And it was radio silence. It was just all I could, all I was like, okay, I'm just closing my eyes and nothing's happening. There's no messages. There's no feeling. There's no this, there's no that. And I just started getting really frustrated and I started getting really angry and I started just really like just shaming myself and like judging myself. And like, I could feel this energy of like, I was trying to force this, force this. But then it brought up like, well, every time I've even tried to do like a plant medicine, nothing happens. And like, what is with that? And I know it's probably just because I'm so clogged and there's probably so many programs, top of programs, but it's really frustrating, honestly, because I can hear all of these things and I have felt what it, what oneness really is. And I have felt moments where like, you know, like when you guys have moments where like you just feel this fire inside of you and you're like, oh my God, like I know what I came here to do. And like, I know what I'm here to do and I understand my mission. And those fires are, they're short lived, but they're incredibly strong. I wasn't on a plant medicine to feel that. 
but most of the time I'm not in that energy. So everything that I'm listening to is very much through my mind. And so when I have these moments where I'm making that space to really go into and nothing's happening, I just get so angry and I get so frustrated. And I know that's, that's, those are the things that I need to really heal and love. Um, yeah, but remember, here's this soul. He, he, she, it, they, them wants to come down to this planet and experience the human experience. Yeah. And they drink ayahuasca, peyote, wachuma, iboga. They do psilocybin. They, you know, smoke a blue lotus. They, and they're like, ah, yeah, nothing working with me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden... Uh, they get a puppy <laughs> and something happens. The point is everybody's journey is different. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I was going to get to is who knows, who knows. So, uh, there was a lady who got struck by lightning and all of a sudden she's like, Oh my God, I can tell your future. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what it is. However, the frustration within, Oh, I should be, I should be this, I should be that, I should be experiencing this, I should be experiencing that. That in itself needs to be embraced. Of course you feel frustrated. You have all kinds of mental programs in and around what this is supposed to look like. It's true, mm-hmm. Totally, yep. And you yep. might be clairaudient. Yep. You might right. need to be in a think tank with sound bowls in order to really get messages. Who yeah. knows? We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Try everything. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean when i had my ayahuasca experience it was nothing at all compared to what i'd heard i thought i was gonna go in and have to work through my death i thought i was gonna have all these insane visions and for me it was not like that at all it wasn't particularly pleasant um but it was a lot of radio silence and what I learned through the process was, oh, you don't get what you want, you get what you need. And I couldn't understand for the life of me then why I didn't get the visions and the crazy trip and the crazy journey. And I felt some stuff. It was, I felt the energy in my body moving um, and I did some purging, but it wasn't, it wasn't what I had in my mind. Good. She and loves the- doing that to people. Yeah, because I came in with all this expectation, Mm -hmm. right? And when we arrive, and as Ellie said, you know, I'm sitting down to connect with my light. And that's beautiful. We want to do that. But when we come from the energy of, oh, I want it to be this way, I have an expectation of what this is, then we get met with all of the programs because we're not coming from the energy of openness, coming from the energy of, of mind, of force, mm-hmm. of, well, I want it to be this way. I want to have the visions. I remember I like, was, I was moving through the, the third ceremony and I asked for like more because I just wanted to experience it and I wanted to purge. And I ended up purging, but it was not what I thought it was going to be. And like, it didn't make me, it just made me feel worse. And it didn't give me like mm-hmm. the third ceremony out of five. Like it didn't give me any more visions. It didn't give me any more like anything other than me feeling sick for the next four to six hours. So it was like a good lesson of like, Oh, get out of your head. And unfortunately back then I didn't have this work to fall back mm-hmm. on, um, which I, I, I wish I did. Um, but I can clearly see now, as soon as I found this work and started having breakthroughs after a few months, it was like, oh, I was never supposed to have a big, like, mind-blowing experience because my life would have probably got, I would have wanted to continue going down that path. And it was important for me in this um, in this incarnation to find this work. And um, I'm very grateful now that I didn't, have all of this like crazy experience in Peru because I might not be here and I might not have found this work. And so the, the idea of what we might not think is something bad at the time, like Ellie, you're obviously moving through this challenging time with like connecting on a deeper level and, and, you know, but as we move through what comes up, 
then that opens us up to the wisdom of why we had to experience what it is. And from being in your shoes and working, when I say that, working through these programs, I can see where you're at. I can feel where you're at. I know what you're working through because I had to work through that phase in my own journey. And because I had to work through that phase, it allows me the wisdom to be able to help others work through that. And so as a coach in this work, Ali, you know, you have to understand this work from within. It doesn't matter like the blocks that we have in our mind or the, the intellectualization of this work. It's have we actually moved through the experience ourselves? And so, you know, you're just on this, you're just being tested to learn a new layer of this work from within. Yeah. I mean, it's so frustrating. Even yeah. as you say that I'm like, Oh, there's the program of frustration. Because I just feel like my soul just came here to learn things like, I don't want to say harder, but it's just like, it, it feels like, it just feels like I'm always the kid that has to study really hard to get an A. Like I'm not the kid who just like goes in, like slams the test and I'm like, I did it. And there's a lot of frustration in that. Um, yeah. But listen to that program right there. Like exactly, you've got to yep. recognize that the way you talk to yourself, yep. the, the things that you just said to yourself, your aspects of self, the aspects of yourself that don't want to believe in this, that don't trust in this are listening yep. and they believe everything that you say. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes sitting in the silence, just the silence, who gives a shit whether you get something come in or not? Just sitting in the silence in general with no questions, just sitting with her and remembering the softness of her cheeks. Yeah. You don't know what might come through and stop asking. You know, when yeah. we stop asking and we really just start being and living in and remembering the texture. Yeah. It's a paradox because I remember when we were on the plane to England this year, what, what happened? Oh, I got visions. Right. Were yeah. you looking for the visions? No, that's when they come. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm not. Yeah. Precisely my point, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's the paradox right we do of course we you want to have visions right yeah. of course they're cool they help you they guide you they could help others but when we come from our mind and we we're in this energy of well i want it to happen and we're yeah. in the expectation that's not where we're, we're not open to receive Yep. So it's in normally the mundane moments when they come in. But then as we do this work more, we can be in that surrender presence and connection all of the time. It starts out with like, oh, well, it's happening now on the plane because I'm not thinking about it. Well, that's because I'm, you know, I'm probably in that moment. I may be open to receive and I don't realize it. And then the more we clear out, back to the what you said earlier, Rachel, it's like we clear out the the vessel. And then we are always open to receive. Um, yeah. Beautiful. The way of I mean, surrender, like we talk about the 20 universal ways of oneness here, the way of surrender comes in in all of what we're talking about. And the more you allow surrender, the frequency of surrender to be there and offer this the space, then you will start experiencing more because you're more often in the state of surrender. I'm going to surrender. Yeah. And yesterday I was talking to one of our new coaches and we were talking about, okay, I don't want red. So I'm going to stay away from red, but I really want blue. So I'm going to drive and force myself towards blue. Well, within that mission, we missed everything in the middle. <laughs> you missed every other color. I wanted to show you the world but you won't let me show you the world because you're so focused on yeah. that, right? I'm so focused on getting the message. I'm so focused on this end point or this, whatever this is that I can't pay attention to everything else you're trying to offer me on the, on the path. Yeah. You guys are both schooling me right now with so much wisdom. It's beautiful. Thank you. I humbly receive all of this because that's exactly it. I feel like what I'm moving through right now is Danny said it to me this morning. He's like, you, you became the first universal way of oneness, which is the way of responsibility, which is I'm taking time for myself 
outside of just needing to heal myself, right? So I obviously that's the way of responsibility when I get triggered go in, but I haven't been just spending time just with myself. And so I've been doing that consistently now. And then here comes the second way, which is the way of patience, which I'm lacking because I'm in complete dullness. There's nothing going on. Frustration's coming up. I'm angry. I'm all of these things, which I can't even get to surrender because I'm not in patience. And so that's the next way that I got a master here and then getting to surrender to surrendering to what is. And I know that this period is cycling me through. Like if you're not comfortable with what this is, there's nothing else that's going to come through right now because this is where you need to be okay with. And mm -hmm. that in itself is not an easy thing to go through, especially I think when you're on this path, like I just, you know, this is, this is my like little kid. I just want it to be magical and I want to be powerful and I want to experience this and I want to see that. And it's like, it, it's so true. The moments in my journey where I didn't expect it or didn't demand it or want it now were the most cosmic, out of body experiences I've ever had. And then here comes my ego chasing that. And it's like, surrender to what is and I and and I can see this is the way this is how the ways are showing themselves and be like, all right, we're going to master this in, in this in all of in this sector of your life right now. And so mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting as I keep doing this, like, where I will go on this journey as you know, with the two of you and all the other journeys that we're all on constantly at the same time simultaneously and so yeah i'm really grateful thank you for the wisdom yeah uh, i just came through and i remember a few months ago i had said this to myself i was like let's embrace the suck yeah right now in this moment your life is gonna suck just like this for forever until you die so you better find happiness within the suck of yeah. this right now and as soon as i was like Okay, it's going to feel like this forever. Can you find a way to function within the suckiness of this? And I was like, yeah, of course I can. Great, let's go. <laughs> Beautiful. It was great. Embrace the suck is like the next t-shirt slogan. Because yeah. here's the problem. I, I, I see it everywhere i see it in life coaching i see it in empowerment coaching it's everywhere you look we have set up this storyline that says look for happiness cultivate joy be be this do this should we little this will, you'll find happiness here stop doing that you're setting everybody up for failure mm -hmm. find ways to just look at the situation and be like, man, this, I feel like a shitty right now. <laughs> and I'm all right with that. And I don't know what's going to happen in the next five or 10 minutes. But right now, I'm just going to sit in this feeling. I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit here and try to create and cultivate joy because I don't feel joyous right now. I actually feel like shit. All right. This is a beautiful, like right <laughs> it's a beautiful segue um, to line up with what I wanted to kind of touch on today so mm. i've been um i've been working with my inner child a lot doing lots mm. of healing um but where i've arrived at is seeing this program that i run where i like hyper focus on my healing um to not feel what is actually in there because if i as soon as i feel something will say negative or bad right that isn't open expansive love and light right i'll obsessively like let me sit down i've got to do the work i have to do the work because mm. i am the way of responsibility right and i'm like oh i gotta do all this so i'll get into that big time and i'll really sit there but actually i've seen that it's that that is a way of avoiding me just feeling what i'm feeling in the moment and me not being able to show up as the way of responsibility in all the other areas of my life. So let's say if I've got to, let's say I've got to take the dog out in the morning, right? But I wake up and there's something there. I'm not in surrender to the feeling and I don't want to just feel shitty while I take the dog for a walk, which is clearly coming from powerlessness. 
So I'm like, well, I've got to go into it and I've got to spend all this time doing the work so I feel okay. And now that I feel Mm. okay, now I can do my responsibilities, which Mm. is not the way of responsibility. So I just want I just want to make that clear that I I know that I'm not showing up as the way of responsibility. And this is what I've been working on. And I've realized that um, I'm not fully embracing the suck. I'm embracing the suck by trying to do this work trying to like make it go away i just want to feel good right which is there's a catch there because it's like yeah i am doing the work which is beautiful but i'm also not doing (laughs) i'm not allowing myself to just feel shitty which is where i'm arriving at now and this that's where the true surrender is and that's where the true power is it's like no i i feel like shit right now and that's okay I don't need to obsessively go in and find the root cause. I just need to be okay with feeling what I'm feeling and continuing to be responsible in all these other areas of my life outside of doing the the self-development work or the self-inquiry. And in that is, that's like the next step. And what I've been struggling with is parenting the inner child. Mm -hmm. Because when I was younger, there was no parenting after around the age of six or seven. It was kind of like, here's the key to the house, come home, like very, very, very little guidance from um, my caregivers at the time. And so I can feel that there's this six, seven year old like running the show who's trying his best but I've got so identified with the inner child and I'm, I'm, I'm awakening to how much he is always here. At first, when I started this work, he was outside of me. And then I started feeling that he was inside of me. And now I'm fully at this place where, oh, there's no separation between me and him. I am him and he is me all of the time. He's always there. I just have to now like grow him up. I can feel him. He's so integrated. I I feel him right now as I'm talking and he's ready to grow up, but it's tricky because yeah, this is, this is where I'm kind of like stuck because it's like, I need to be the parent to teach him to grow up, but I don't know how to be the parent because I was never shown that as a child. And this is always the, I think the catch of healing, right? We, want a certain aspect of something to allow us to heal but we never got given that and so we have to learn to embody it and this is this is the tricky part right is we have to learn to embody something that we are not um Ah, gonna time you out right there i guess we are it's just we were we were never we were never shown we were never matured up out of what it is that's in there. So there's still, yeah, there's still this, this little boy that I can feel he's right here and he's ready to listen. (laughs) But then it's like, I'm (laughs) listening to myself and emotionally and mentally I'm the boy. So I'm like caught in this, like, hang on, (laughs) we're the same thing. How do I, how do I, how do I do this? So, that's it. That's kind of like a challenge that I'm at. And I don't know if all of that made sense. Of course. Um, I've, you know, I've got two little ones, five and almost 11. And I'm so fortunate to be able to see it every single day, every hour that I'm with them, that it matters how we are showing up with our children. Because especially the five-year-old, she steps into these narcissistic zones it's all about her, man. And it's supposed to be all about her. This is the, her level of brain development right now. And all of these programs that we're talking about, they have their own level of consciousness. And if you are triggered into a level of consciousness of the narcissistic toddler, we have got to mystically parent that little toddler out of these programs so they don't run those programs in the future. That's not how we do that, honey. What would be the most loving thing to do right now? What energy are you coming from when you talk to your brother that way? That's not how we are going to show up. That's not our values in this house. We don't talk about people like that in this house. Those are our values. 
we're not worried about that in this house, but maybe they're worried about it that in, in their house, that's the belief system that they carry. It's not our belief system or, or our opinion, but it doesn't mean that they're wrong or they're bad. And these are the things that we are teaching our children every single day, all of the hours that I'm interacting with them. But there's also boundaries. She's learned that her emotions matter in this house and that there's spaciousness for however she's feeling. And then there was a moment, there was a little shift of, oh, well, if my emotions really matter, then I can just have them (laughs) big and gorgeous and all over the place. And now we're teaching about resilience and emotional uh, resilience and regulation and boundaries and about how you can treat other people and not projecting your emotions onto other people and how to really open up and take care of yourself in a split second, how to check in with your energy. What are you projecting in, out into the world? Is that the most loving way to show up right now? And these are loving and healthy boundaries, firm but gentle boundaries set down by somebody who cares about you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, thinking up, like, man, like, if my parents taught me that, it would be a whole different Ellie right now. And I realized, too, like, you know, Danny, you didn't have parents that were really around and teaching you things, but I had parents who were doing everything for me. Mm -hmm. And which now that's a whole hodgepodge of a mess, because I don't really know what it looks like either, because everything was always done for me or it was yelled at me to do it. So no one was ever teaching me or like encouraging me to do it on my own. It was the opposite of all of that. And so hearing you, Rachel, talk how you're, you know, really doing this with your kids. I mean, it's, it's a game changer. Truly. Totally. 100%. You know, she got, she ebbs and flows and it's parenting is hard when you care and you have to be in it and on it and in there. For quite Mm -hmm. a few years, you have to really be like, what's going on with you right now? What's coming up in you? What do we have to guide you through right now? Yesterday, I said, uh, let's go change. We're going to go change our pants and shorts right now because I'm going to go play some roller basketball, this game that Mateo and I created. (laughs) Super fun, by the way. I'll share the details later. (laughs) She didn't want to go change her shorts because she wanted me to do it for her. You know how to do it. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I'm afraid that I won't do it right. Okay, so all these statements start coming out of her mouth. And a powerful mother has to stand in her power in those moments and guide her through lovingly. I'm not going in there and I'm not helping you change into those shorts. You are going to do it. And here's how we're going to do it. But it takes some patience Patience, patience. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> I can't wait till your kids are older, and I'm gonna talk to them. And be like, all right. So now that you're older, what's what? What was it like? Right, you know, what did, right. how, what did you guys learn? Because you know, wow, it's yeah, monumental for sure. But the thing is, oh, you go mess it up. Yeah. You're going to mess it up. You're going to mess something up. And she's going to be like, you know, mom, it really upsets me that you were so up in my grill yeah. with this enlightenment <laughs> shit growing up. Like, I'm just over it. And the thing that my husband and I have talked about quite a bit is the ability to say, you know what? Wow. Thank you for your point of view. I can see how that might hurt you. And is there anything that I can do to restore this relationship where it is right now? What, what can I do? Mm. That's all we can do as parents. Cause you're going to mess it up. Yep. Mm. I'm, I'm messing something up right now. And I don't even know that I'm messing it up. Right. <laughs> and it's going to hit me. Mateo will be like, you know, he'll be 32. You remember that time you made up that game called, Roller basketball. (laughs) Yeah, that traumatized me for my whole life. (laughs) Well, you know, damn, dude. Damn. 
Yeah, and yeah. this is we can't save anyone. We can't. There's not. You can't protect anyone from pain. Every being has to go through their own emotional journey, and they're gonna feel certain things, and life's gonna happen. But we have to learn how to to take ownership for the hurt, especially mm-hmm. if somebody's brave enough to come to you with the hurt. If somebody is brave enough to say, you know what, you really hurt my feelings when, don't dismiss them. Well, it wasn't my intention. Yeah. Well, that was never my intention. I don't give a shit what your intentions were. That hurt. And I'm brave enough to come to you and say that that hurt me. Ah, you know what? I'm so sorry. I can see how much pain that might have caused you. Is there anything that I can do to make it right? And that's all we can really do at the end of the day so long as you are authentically you know feeling like you can take ownership (laughs) you know what i mean totally as you were as you were kind of talking through that and as i what i shared before i i got a bunch that came through about what i kind of like shared and i realized that um that it's just more of like the the victim and the kid looking up towards parent right of like i am not reclaim what what came through is i need to fully reclaim my power as the as the guide as the parent and then i even saying that i can feel i'm like yeah and it fucking sucks that i didn't have that right and there and therein is the pain but it's like yeah i can sit here and i can look for the answer or i can just keep working on becoming like more mature more responsible and i guess this is where i can really start to feel this segue from the power within um the basic or it's not basic but the foundational course that we um we move everyone through so they can connect to their power and then now i really feel oh okay here's the point at which I need to become the first way of oneness. It's I feel like I'm I'm right at the I'm at the door now to start entering what what that means and what that is because nobody is coming to save me. Mm-hmm. Nobody's coming to be my parent. And um, I there's only one way that this is going to happen and it's by me choosing to become the way of responsibility and that means raising my awareness in every moment and saying what does the way of responsibility look like, feel like, sound like in this moment? And there's been a, a huge block that I've had with integrating the ways. And I think I'm starting to fully see and feel why that blockage has been there because I needed to get to this place that I'm at now where I'm like, I'm really feel more ready already mm-hmm. um, to actually become responsible in every area of my life just not just one not just about healing in every area um yeah but the victim has to be validated we have to remember that a lot Mm -hmm. of people hear victim mentality or victim consciousness and that's got a bad rap it's got a bad connotation like yeah oh you're acting like a victim you got to remember though they were it was it was hurtful. It was harmful. That hurt. And no one was there to validate the hurt. Whether it was a shaming language used in a household or a beating or bombs going off outside their home, the nervous system is what we're talking about here. And when no yep. one was there to say, oh, buddy, I can see how much that hurt when you got betrayed by your friend at school today. That must have hurt. What did you do? How did it feel? How did the other person react? And you have the space to talk and you're seen by another person. You're validated. You're understood. And then it starts to transform because the spaciousness is offered. Whoa, that that must have been really super scary. Tell me more about that. What did it feel like to be you and have your grandmother shaming you for playing with yourself in the closet? What did that feel like? And just being there for yourself in that spacious way and allowing that aspect of yourself to show you what it felt like to be them. 
Then the victim says, all right, well, now that I'm validated, now that I'm seen and now that I'm heard, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily feel like the victim anymore. I think I am now able to rise out of this, grow up and move on with my life. It's yeah. a, it's a essential step. And, and then, yeah, that's judgment. Yeah. I think I've arrived at the place of all of that, like healing all of that, but then not taking the next step towards okay beautiful job feeling all that healing all of the pain that was there now let's become the mystical parent and elevate you out of let's mature you up and and get you you know so you're not trapped at that age and as you said like that comes with first healing we have to heal we have to validate acknowledge the pain but then it's not enough to do do, do that we have to then actually mature the the inner child, the child, wh whoever it is that's showing up, we have to mature them up and out of that that age, that program, that wound, whatever it might be. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say that you did this, Danny, but I do yeah. want to bring this up. I do think that this is really important. I have seen it before. Um, the victim gets validated. The victim is heard. The victim is seen. And then the victim starts to recognize, oh, wow, I never had attention before. And now all of a sudden I'm getting all this attention. Oh, yeah. So some people may, I don't know for sure. I've seen it a few times. But some people may stay there because they're getting a lot of attention. It feels really good. And I'm not going to call it an addiction, but it's a little dopamine hit to have somebody uh, have empathy for you. It feels really good to have somebody maybe even have sympathy for you. Who knows? But we have to recognize that the victim starts to get a little bit of attention and they can use it to their benefit. You know, I watch my kids do it every once in a while mm -hmm. and they'll do it on purpose just to see how I will react. And we're very clear with our communication here. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to let you get away with that. But um, catching ourselves as grown adults as we're stuck there. I was stuck there for a hot second. You guys saw me go through it. I was getting some attention through being a victim. I didn't even mm -hmm. realize I was using victim language, but here's these people who are validating my pain, listening. I'm being very, very vulnerable right now. And they're here for me. Mm -hmm. Damn, dude, this feels really good. They're not putting me down. They're not judging me. They're not uh, saying that I need to get over it. Wow. So I caught myself working that angle a little bit. I'm like, oh, girl, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are so not doing this. You need to pop out of this right now. And like you said, Danny, grow up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's a fine line. I've definitely run that in the past. Um, I felt I felt it come out sometimes even in the middle of healings. I'll be like dropped into my heart, like really like <laughs> crying, moving through something. And then I'll hear a little voice like, oh, look how look how good you are at healing. I bet everyone sees how much you're healing right now. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like, I'm trying to heal so right good. now. Don't <laughs> give me that shit. Like, go away. I love yeah. It. And I think as coaches too, we're because I'm very easily manip uh, easily manipulated. No. Yeah. Like, I, like I've seen some people do that and I fall for it. Right. And then you do yeah. it even more of the empathizing of the, oh, my God, I'm here for you. And then you start to see, wait a minute, I'm getting played right now. And so that's why we're, you know, this is masters of self, but masters of subtle energies as well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, and 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 Baker, for you just even saying that and it, it's badass for you to recognize it, saw that you did it and then like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. And I think that's important for other people who you know, we're never witnessed in their trauma, you know, we're never witnessed yeah. and had no one to ever speak with or ha listen to them. And like the work that we do is we as coaches, we are there to support these some of these people that have never had anyone to speak to who never no one ever gives a shit about them. And here we are like walking them and guiding them. And of course, like, yeah, they can take that and run with it. And so as coaches, it's our ability to go, hey, see that what you're doing right there? Let's see that. Let's love that. Because we don't want to, we don't want to stay trapped there. Because then you become another, uh, another part of you that doesn't ain't that pretty, 
You know, because so, then you um, start expecting this in your relationship, and I'm going to tell you right quick, this is not going to work in your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you start, uh, I think Rachel was talking about how men are more and more trying to quote unquote hold space for their women as they're going through a soften. Their- Oh my God. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Don't start working this angle because then all of a sudden you have, you know, men trying to take care of, of infants going through emotional things. I mean, I can get, go yeah. on a tangent here with how that could go haywire, but you start letting people get away with that and you're not timing that out and being like, all right, time out. Do you see what you're doing there? It's showing up in the relationship and then they wonder why they're sabotaging. things at home Mm -hmm. well beautiful conversation y'all um if any of you out there want to do this deep work work with rachel danny me or any of the incredible mystical life coaches masters of university set up a coaching consultation with us learn about our group class how to work with us one-on-one um go get rachel's book the 20 universal ways of oneness and before you get it take a moment because it's going to require you to step up (laughs) All right. And there's a digital course that also accompanies that, which is called the introduction to the universal ways of oneness. If you guys enjoy this episode, please like share, subscribe, comment. It really helps us to keep doing these podcasts for free. And um, thank you guys so much for this episode and for joining me. And until next time, we'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye.